Welcome to Jamie TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is the Starry Pad from Donna. Donna have sent this to me in exchange for a demo type video, but they're not paying me for the video. So my words and thoughts are still my own. Well, they would be anyway, but you know what I'm saying. Now, I'm a very small person with tiny little girl sized hands. Look how small this unit is. If I just get my favorite Freddie Mercury pop for some perspective for you, just checking that's in shot. Although it's very small, it is feature packed. There's an awful lot on this little board, which feels very sturdily built to me. It's plastic, but it feels pretty tough. I'm gonna show you how all these features work and everything, but you know what? I just really like the pretty lights. It comes very nicely boxed. Not very interesting, but it's a good box, right? It also comes with one of those uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, cables that goes to five I need another hand hang on let's just put this down right 3.5 millimeter thingy into the back of the unit and five pin MIDI cable out type thing it comes with a USB lead which could be a bit longer if I'm honest uh, it's USB C to USB A and there is a little adapter that comes with it if you want to convert the USB A into another USB-C and it comes with a very clear instruction manual now this arriving here coincided with Logic Pro being released for the iPad so I fired up Logic Pro as soon as I downloaded it and I plugged this in opened up a drum instrument and the pads worked right away with the full level switch deactivated, we can use the pads to achieve varying different degrees of sensitivity, but with it switched on, all sounds will be played at max volume. The Starry Pad has a number of assignable knobs. You can actually assign them wherever you want, but here in Cubasis 3, I've somewhat predictably mapped the playhead button to play and stop, record to record, button A to metronome on and off, B to loop on and off, and my six assignable faders to my mixing desk, and my six twisty knobs to the corresponding pan controls. Now you may be thinking there are only two faders and only two twisty knobs, you stupid hippie. But if I press fader bank, it goes green, and this is now faders three and four. And press again, blue is for faders five and six. The twisty knob banks work in exactly the same way. If you're wondering how to assign controls like this in Cubasis 3, it's about as difficult as putting on a hat. We go to Setup, select MIDI, MIDI Learn. I'll reset MIDI Learn so Cubasis 3 forgets the current assignments. Now I select Play, press the Play button, exit MIDI Learn, and that button is now assigned. If you're going to be connecting your Starry Pad to a desktop or laptop, then I suggest that you go to Donna's website and download the Starry Pad editor. I'll put a direct link under the video, but it's very easy to find. Just go to Donna's website, down to the bottom, Downloads, select MIDI controller, and then choose between Windows and Mac and get your download. The software looks like this. It's much like a Kai software for the LPD-8 or MPK Mini, but sexier and in my experience less glitchy and will allow you to assign different CC numbers to all of the controls, change what notes the pads play, switch the buttons between momentary and toggle and more for all of the different banks. Here in Cubase 12 Pro, the daddy of all doors, I have two instances of Groove Agent open for this cyber metal project I've just started. On track one, you'll see over here, I've got Starry Pad selected for MIDI input, which was recognized automatically by Cubase. And if I hit my pads, you'll see I'm playing these awesome sounds from the Metal Essentials pack I downloaded from Steinberg, which is an incredible pack. Now, if I press 
pad bank, I can now play this bank of drum sounds and again this bank of sounds. Now if I click on this track you'll see I've assigned Starry Pad as an input controller here too and I have another instance of Groove Agent with metronomic cinema loaded up, another bolt on pack I downloaded which is full of sounds perfect for atmospherics and percussion for the kind of music I'm making at the moment. Triggering these sounds with Starry Pad is great because I can experiment with putting them in different places easily and toggle through the banks easily to play the different sounds without touching my mouse. If we press note repeat then for as long as a pad is held down, this will happen. We can change the tempo of the repeat by using the shift function and pressing pad 16 twice at the desired speed. Notice underneath it says tap tempo. Let's change this to eighth notes by pressing shift and this button. That should give you the idea. Using the shift button, you can also access swing, transpose, octave change, and various tempo subdivisions. If you like what you've seen so far and you're thinking of getting yourself a starry pad, then down below this video you'll find a link and a code that you can use to get some extra money off. Everyone loves a bargain, right? And while you're down there, rude, you'll find links to my merchandise, website, Patreon, music and other stuff that you can do to help out this channel and while I'm asking for things please do remember to give me a thumb up and if you haven't done already then subscribe. Now what do I think to the starry pad? I'm a YouTuber so I've got to find fault with something. So I'm going to say the USB cable that it comes with is very short um, but then aren't they always with products like this? And um, I would like to see an iOS app. Right, so the editor software that you can use on desktop, I would like to see an iOS version of it because this makes a fantastic companion for an iOS musician. Just think of it, you throw this and an iPad in your bag and wherever you go in the world you can make music. I'm going on a tour of Japan in a few days and this is definitely coming with me because it takes up no room at all. It's not very heavy but it's robust enough to survive a trip. I think that what I would have to say is, if there was anything I was concerned about, the knobs do stick up a bit, so I'd probably wrap it in my pants to protect it. But I have to say, on units like this, on the cheaper ones, the faders and the knobs tend to be a bit wobbly and don't feel very substantial. That's not the case with this. Everything about it seems to be very well made. I do think that the pads are perhaps not quite as good um, sensitivity wise as perhaps the ones on say the Akai LPD-8 for finger drummers that is people who really need that sensitivity I think there are probably better products but for me for the way I will use it just for creating on the move in a door it's absolutely perfect and ideal and I think that's all I've got to say about it I've really enjoyed using it and I'm really really pleased to have it so that's it. You can bugger off now. Thank you for thank you for watching. Please do take care of yourselves. Make lots of music. Be kind and be good. And try not to pissy pants about. See you later.